guys, it's Tandrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be opening all of these Furious Beyond Death booster packs here, thanks to some lucky runs at pre-release, and the generous sponsor of this video, well I just donated a couple packs, my friend Leon, we've managed to gather a couple dozen packs here, and yeah, I'm going to be opening them today, hopefully we get some good pulls, without further ado, let's get into it. Start off with Calyx pack. Oops. Mountain. Ooh, an Elspeth straight off the bat. That's a pretty good pull. Um, she's not that good. I actually think she's a really bad planeswalker. She did almost win my enemy a game. In fact, she did win my enemy a game of limited just because of the life gain and the one ones. It's really good stooly late game. But she's not an insane card, but she is still a very good pull to start off the video. Fateful End, Solid Uncommon, Destiny Spinner, this is also really good, 2 mana, 2 free, makes all this stuff uncounterable and can turn lands into creatures, and Felonex Tactics, also pretty solid, and then we've just got our commons. Oh, bloody pack. Undo a Rage Hound, Dolan of Lampet, we don't care about the commons, do we? Wolf Willow Haven, The Birth of Miletus, Scophus Maze Warden. What the heck? Clophus God of Destiny, two back to back Mythits, and it's an old art too. This is an insane god. It's a free mana 4 5 legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible. And then he says, as long as your devotion to red and green, which is these in the mana cost, is less than seven, so you'll need at least seven of these. This includes herself. Um, she isn't a creature. And then, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you get an exile token card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, you get to add red or green. Otherwise, you gain two life and it hits each enemy for two. It's a super insane card. Um, this kind of just says the enemy's got a few turns to live because she's almost unkillable. Because she hits them for every turn, gains you life. And if you can get her online, that's just a swinger coming in that they can't stop every turn. Super solid card and really valuable. I think like this version is selling for... A lot of money right now. No planes. Kraken. Swamp. Four Traveler's Amulet. And a Labyrinth of Scophus. This is pretty good. Um, it's pretty much a maze of it, but it costs four to activate and also taps for colorless. And it works for blocking. It's actually really good. It also combos pretty well with this guy because he says whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control, name this, you may have that fight. It's super solid combo if you've got both of those. Pretty good card. And then, yeah. These picks are pretty hard to open. Sata Island is the best one. Everyone seems to really like these lands. And an Aphema of the Cacophony. It's a 2 mana 2 1 legendary enchantment creature harpy with flying, and it says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, you get a 2 2 zombie. This is really good in graveyard decks because it make, making you a 2 2 every turn is insane. And it's a zombie. I reckon this might actually see you playing zombie decks, even though it's not a zombie. And a 2 mana 2 1 flying isn't that bad either. Um, in commons, this is quite good. If, I reckon this is potential. It doesn't seem that good, but it returns something from your graveyard to on top of your library and you gain some life, and it's a decent body. I think Strat is go from the bottom because we've got that weak spot in the middle. You can crack quite easily from the middle if you're having strug if you're struggling to open them. Nightmare, Swamp, and Allure of the Unknown. This card, I don't know. It can dud and give your enemy a massive thing and you get nothing, but but it can also be really good at the same time. So it's kind of five mana, reveal the top six of your library. An opponent exiles a non-land card from among them, then put the rest of it into your hand. Then the opponent may cast a non-land card without paying its mana cost. So it's five mana, draw five. But no, look at the top six, your enemy gets one for free, and then you get the other five to draw a decent card. Another fateful end. Uncommons and commons. <sighs>
Human soldier. On planes. Pretty good. I'm gathering them for my mono white commander. Ooh, and an next lotus. That's pretty good. Also very good on my mono white commander. It's a four mana legendary artifact that enters the battlefield tapped. You tap it to choose a color and add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. So you pretty much, it enters tapped and then you tap it. It's kind of like a Nykvos that activates for free. I reckon this is going to be insane in mono color commanders. Like my, I've got some Torban and Azusa decks. I'm trying to make a mono white. I reckon it will be insane in any of those. Really solid in EDH. And I also think it will see play in two color. I don't think it's going to see much play out of EDH, outside of EDH, though, because full cost just to ramp you a bit is not good enough for Pioneer, Standard, Modern, Legacy, any format, really. Some person might find a way to break it, though. Banishing Light, that's quite good. Remove something for free. Human Soldier, Planes, and an Elspeth Conger's Death. Five mana saga as it enters the battlefield and after your draw step add a lord lore counter and then you sack after free. Number one, it says exile target permanent and opponent controls with CMC free or greater. So this is going to be most freaks you're trying to exile anyway, so that's a solid number one. Number two makes non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast until your next turn, which is pretty good. And number three is return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then put a 1-1 counter on it or a loyalty counter on it. This is solid. It gets you something back and makes it bigger. Exiles are free and makes their things harder to cast. I reckon it's really good and limited. Probably too expensive to see play anywhere else, though. Maybe in Commander. Chainwork. This is really good. And the green, red decks and limited, which I think is one of the best colours. Because they have a lot of struggle with white and blue flies. And there's a lot of those. But that's really their deck's only weakness and limited. So if you're building Gruul, make sure to include these in, like, draft and seal and stuff. Hey, okay, now on to the next pile. Ooh, this one's immune to being open at the bottom. Finally, it was a boss battle. We did it. Gonna do this one backwards. That's a very good Daybreak Chimera. It's one of the best flyers in Limited. Underworld Dreams. Mystic Repeal. This is busted and limited as well because it just kills any enchantment and most things are enchantment. I also think it's really good. It might even see a minor amount of play in other formats like in sideboards. Rise to Glory. And Hectos, the Unscarred. Now this guy, I, I when I first read him, I didn't think he was that good when the spoilers came out. I was like, he's a 4 minus 6 one. He says he attacks each combat available. Then... It says, as he enters the battlefield, choose one, two, or three at random. And then he says he's protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So he's almost unkillable. But I thought he said he has protection from the chosen converted mana cost, which I didn't think is that good. But no, so if you get, let's say, four, for example, or even two or three, anything really, he just swings and can hit them for six, six, they're dead, unless they manage to get something of that cost. They also can't remove them unless they have something of that CMC. Super solid card. Yep, broke at the bottom. I knew it. Yeah, that's Pax Weakness, guys. You need to always open them from the bottom. Kraken, Swamp. Temple of Malice, that's pretty good. It's a land, enters tapped. When it enters, you get a scry one, and it taps for either a green or a red. It's a couple bucks, I think. Another one of these. Binding of the Titans, and Soul Guide Lantern. Oh, that one opened at the top. It's a rare one. <laughs> Wool Island. Foil Vexing Gull. Anything else? Kurnoros. Oh, he's a pretty good guy. Um, Kurnoros. He's a free mana, free, free legendary creature hand with Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink, which is already a decent card. And then he says creature cards and graveyards can't enter the battlefield and players can't cast spells from graveyards. I reckon he's going to be really solid in sideboard of standard because he gets rid of all the escape things. Maybe even main just because it's like a single or two copies because he's such a good stats. Big fan of that card. Banishing Light. Another one that's very solid removal in EDH, draft, standard, most formats, most of like, oh no, standard commander and draft it's really good in. Agonizing Remorse, slightly better Fort Seas in terms of ability but costs one more. And Glimpse of Freedom, next pack. Come on. 
Ooh, foil underworld breach. Rare foil. That's pretty good. It's a two mana enchantment, and it says each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus the exile three other cards from your graveyard. And at the beginning of your end step, you have to sacrifice it. So you pretty much play this, and it gives all your stuff kind of flashback, but you also... No, all your stuff you can cast... A, yeah, flashback, I guess. But then it also works for everything, but they also have to exile three other cards. This might see some playing some Storm decks, but I doubt it. Might just be a fun card to play in EDH. Oh, and a Tectonic Giant. Pretty good. This is a really good card. It's a 4-mana 3-4 three, four creature, Elemental Giant. And he says, when he attacks or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, you get to either choose to deal free damage to each opponent, or you can exile the top two cards of your library and choose one of them, and until end of turn you can play that card. This is really solid. He's almost guaranteed to hit your enemy for damage, because if you attack, he's still going to hit them. And most things that would deal with him are a spell, so you're also going to hit them then. And he can get you card advantage as well. Solid red card. Might even see some standard play. Demigod, that's quite cool. All these packs are getting weaker as we go, opening from the top. Planes. Turmeric calls the dead. Pretty solid card. It's a free mana saga, and it says at number one is put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard if you do get a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Um, and that's one and two. And it says you gain X life, and number three is you gain X life and scry X where X is the number of zombies you control. Super solid card. Um, I reckon it will play, see a decent bit of standard play. It's, I think it's kind of comparable to History of Banalia. I uh, might see a teeny bit of playing Commander in some other formats because it's quite good with zombies. And yeah, cool card. Oh, oh, this one's hard to open. Nah, I've got it. Okay, this is a mystery pack. Nah, that's boring. Stinging Lionfish. Agonizing Remorse. Dreamstalker Manticore. Pretty solid card. Free mana 4 2 enchantment creature Manticore. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, it deals 1 to any target. I think that will see some standard play. And finally, Erebos, Bleak Hearted. Oh, you need to do... Okay, that's a good luck pack strategy. If you want a good thing from a pack, you need to do that. And it's an old art. Second god this video, third mythic, off to a pretty good... Well, not start. Off to a pretty good pack unboxing so far. We've got... um, He's a 4 mana 5, 6, legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible. And as long as your devotion to black is less than 5, he isn't a creature. But then he says, whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay 2 life if you do draw a card. I reckon this is super solid. It will be insane in sack decks. And thanks to Gary being reprinted, he might even see some play in mono. Mono black devotion might become a thing of standard. He might see some play there. And you can pay two to sack another creature, which will also gives you this trigger here, to set, to give target creature minus two, minus one until end of turn. And he's like an OP god. Super solid card. And it's an old art. Oh, I've been pretty lucky. Foil too. Ooh, foil tectonic giant. Tectonic Giant is really solid. It's a 4 mana 3 4, a creature, elemental giant, and whenever he attacks or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. He either hits each opponent for free, or you get to exile the top. The, oh, yeah, you already know this. I did it early in the video. Stupid me. And then we've got an island and a token. Yeah, but for Tectonic Giant and Era Boss, that's a really good pack. Okay, we're going to have to do that straight again, this pack. Okay, that's the 1000 IQ strat. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, common poor pile fell over. I'll fix that real quick. Okay. No, it's common too. This should be uncommon. No, another common. Yeah, that's more like it. Soul Guide Lantern. Good graveyard hate. Another Binding of the Titans. Fateful End. Elspeth, you're kidding me. That No, guys, you actually need to do that. Do the packs backwards. And then you'll actually pull all the mythics. Because look, like... Like this pack, and then the second Elspeth this unboxing. If only we could swap these Elspeths out for her nemesis, Helio. Then this would be an insane unboxing. But no, she's really good. I think she's quite a bit. Um, just cool card. Really good. Mount it. And an island. Yeah, my luck is really good today. Four mythics. Like, this is the best pack unboxing I've ever done. 
human soldier. Oh no, backwards. Yeah, that's the strap. Okay, betcha we'll pull another mythic here. Guaranteed. Satestian. Enemy of Enlightenment. Laguna. Gary, he's pretty good. Um, in case you don't know what Gary is, he's like one of the best. He was originally a common. He was one of the best commons of all time. But he is still in stain, especially in like two hitter giant. We came up against him with me and my friend, and he they had like five devotion, no ten devotion or something. And then they had us for like twenty. It was insane. But he's a five mana two four creature zombie, and he says when Gray Merchant of Espodal enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life. Where X is your devotion to black, and you gain life equal to the amount of life lost this way. Super solid, insane in EDH. It's really good. In pauper because the original was a common i reckon it will see insane play in standard seeing play in pioneer even teeny bit of modern play really good and no not a mythic okay no still you have to do the backward strat actually it's really good guys this is like genuine advice um ashiox erasure four mana enchantment flash when it enters you get a exile target spell so better than a counter then your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as exile card but then when this goes away they get the spell back pretty good Okay, try one more backwards. See if that gives us luck. But no, I actually think that's like my new lucky strat, like my signature thing. I'll make sure to do it every video from now on. Oh, there's Leon, the sponsor of this video. Oh no, the pack donator. <laughs> oh, that's the first uncommon. Shimmerwing Chimera. Rise to Glory. Oh. What the? Yep, guys. Apologies about that, guys. I kind of freaked out because we got that, that strategy, though. I, 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 it's just luck, but honestly, the, the three of those four packs have been absolutely insane. Three of those four packs have got God, Foil Rear, a Farsa, and an Elspeth. Like, when that's like, you honestly can't get better than that. And honestly, I did not script any of this. This is all authentic packs. Um... I kind of freaked, what happened there is I got so excited, I freaked out, and I have this really crap makeshift um, camera stand I made out of a bunch of binders and boxes, and like my pickaxe and everything all the way up to the top, and then um, I had a box with a phone, my camera hanging off the edge, and then I got like freaked out, bumped it, and everything fell down to bits, which was kind of failure, but yeah, Facet, she's an absolutely insane, I think she's like, the regular version's like 20 bucks, I think this version's like... 40 bucks. It's like insane god. Um, she's a 4 minus 6 fire legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. And then she says, as long as your devotion to blue is less than 5, Farsa isn't a creature. And then she says, at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. And then you can pay for to tap another target creature. That's insane. She's like worth heaps. She's a really good, powerful card, especially good in flicker. Um, yeah, that's an insane pull. Actually, really good luck. Um, yeah, that strat though, guys. If you really like, it's just lucky strat. Like, you need to open packs backwards though. Genuine advice. And foil my trident, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'll be honest, I peeked at that while I was setting the camera back up. <laughs> okay, next pack. Now we need to keep opening them backwards. Keep getting that insane luck. But honestly, it's got to end here. It's got to end here. Heliod's Punishment. That's really good removal. It only lasts for four turns, but I reckon for two mana, four turns is enough to rest of the game normally. Hateful Adolin. Entrancing Lure. And a Storm Herald. Yeah, I knew that, that luck was too good to continue. But no, he's a solid card. He's a free mana, free two human shaman with haste. And he says, when he enters a battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. And then you exile those augurs at the beginning of the next end step. And if they would enter the graveyard, they get exiled instead. And there's Swamp in that. Um, it goes really good. Let me, let's see if I can find it. Put one earlier in the unboxing. It goes really good with that four mana enchantment. Um, this one, Iroas' Blessing. Goes really good with this, because um, I, I won a game unlimited with it. It's a full minor enchantment that says when it enters, it deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls. So with this plus this, that's an insane combo that removes something and makes this a full free with haste. Well, until end of turn, then free to. But no, that might actually be a standard playable com combo. Super solid card.
Apologies if you're hearing a bit of my breathing just because my head is really close to the camera. Um, human soldier, mountain. Why don't I do this one backwards? Um, never mind. Just gonna do this pack backwards because that's the thousand IQ strat. We already know we're getting full swamp, which is already oh, what's this card? I haven't seen it before, which is already good. Farrakh is spawn, three mana, three four Gorgon. Uh, is escape for six, exile three other cards from your graveyard, which means you can cast it for six mana and exiling, exiling three other cards. And then he says he escapes with two one one counters on it. So when you do that, he becomes a five six. And then he says when it enters the battlefield this way, each opponent sacks a non gorgon. So it's a free mana free four with the escape and a huge upside if you can escape it. Okay. Sorry about wasting time on the uncommon, just never seen that card. Daxos. Oh, old art, that's pretty good. Impending Doom. Okay, is this gonna be another clutch pack? Ooh, Labyrinth of Scophus is pretty good. Um it's a land, taps for a colorless, and pay for and tap it to remove target taking or blocking creature from combat. And a foil swamp. Foil one of these lands I actually think will probably be worth a bit. Just because everyone loves these lands. They're like beautiful. Congrats to Wizards and Sam Burley for doing this amazing art. Um it's super solid card. Well not <laughs> of course it's a solid card, it's a basic, but no, that this is really good looking, really beautiful. Like, even these regular basics are still, like, really good looking. Like, just look at them. Everyone wants to seem to get a play set. And, it, yeah, these packs are pretty good. They fill me up with a lot of them. Okay. Do I do it backwards? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that strat... Not necessarily a strat, but... No, that's, like, the ultimate luck. Another one of these... Nissan Horn Beetle, good card. Phoenix of Ash. 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Phoenix, Flying Haste. Um, He says, you pay 3 to give him 2 until end of turn. And then he has escape for 4 and exile 3 other cards. And he escapes for 1-1 one, one counter. If you have a stashed up graveyard, he is super solid. Because he just keeps coming back and you pump him up and hit him for massive amounts of damage. It's a really awesome card. Now we're on to the second to last pack. Oh, wait, no, this is the last one. Never mind. Okay. Okay, is this backwards last pack going to give us a Heliod? It's one amazing card we haven't pulled yet. Underworld Fires. Heroes of the Revel. Sistian Pioneer. And an Underworld Breach. And all of those. It's pretty decent, like I said before. We've got fours. But honestly, guys, that backwards strategy at the start was actually really funny. We got super good luck with it. I reckon that unboxing was pretty solid, if you ask me. Got all these lands along with this nice foil one here. Got some nice uncommons. Not too many Garys, which is the main expensive one, but pretty good uncommons. And then our rare and mythic slot, though. That easily paid for the unboxing, honestly. And they were the same cards. I can do, like, so much with all this. Like, look at this. This will be, like, the clickbait sign. Although, that would spoil everything for the people, wouldn't it? Insane pack unboxing, guys. But, yeah, that was an absolutely insane unboxing. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. No, I didn't unbox that. Hope you enjoyed the video, and, yeah, peace out.